so that's the final stretch. And uh, let's um, set a few rules when we conclude. Please help me, help, help us. I'm going. They are going because for two reasons. First, because it would be very wrong that there would be a I mean, a crowd of people who want to take photographs and shake hands because you are the real protagonist. You should stand up and shake your own hands mutually and say, oh, fuck, how good we were. It's not us on the stage, it's you. And then, not me, I'm bionic, but they are destroyed. <laughs> so, really, objectively, we can't go on forever, really. So, at the end, we'll be going, and also because there are uh, lots of bureaucratic things we have to take care of. So, at the end, we won't have, I'm sorry, any signature, any photograph, I'm sorry. And then we'll start, now, we are going to start with questions. Uh, we have a list of questions here. I don't know whether we can um, cover all of them. I hope we can. Since I'm going to read the question, so I'll be very succinct, U5, U5, or U4 at the moment, must be uh, quick in your uh, answers as well. Brief, 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 because all questions are important. Now let's start with the first brief question, which requires brief answers. Now, how is it that Britain, with a sovereign country, is not having good economic prospects. <laughs> According to MMT. Bad economic policy. Yes, too much, too much fiscal austerity. The, the, the British make exactly this mistake that I was discussing earlier. You constantly hear Britain's Chancellor of the Exchequer saying, if we don't cut our spending, we're going to become like Greece. It is total self-inflicted suicide in the case of British. It's even more stupid than the situation you find yourselves in because they have the capacity to save themselves. How can you reconcile full employment in MMT, according to MMT, with inflation of labor costs? Well, MMT focuses on the aggregate price level. And of course, aggregate inflation, inflation in a consumer price index, which measures the whole range of goods and services that consumers buy, is driven by many things, not the least of which, at least in the US, which I know best, by energy costs, health care, and housing. If you have external shocks, commodity price bubbles, speculation that drives food and energy prices higher, these can feed through into your inflation index well before you get to full employment and independent of any wage inflationary pressures. Even under the neoclassical model, when you have productivity gains, you can have wage gains without having inflation. And the last 15 to 20 years have shown in Europe and the United States very great gains in productivity and very poor gains in wages. So there isn't a contradiction, even under the neoclassical model. Let me say that you can all answer, um, but very briefly. I mean, even the f all of you, I mean, but very briefly. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll just make a very quick uh, uh, addition to what was said already. MMT likes to talk about inflation in terms of real resource constraints and lack of productive capacity because of real resource constraints. Labor is a resource. The longer people remain unemployed, the less productive they are, the more unemployable they become, 
and this in itself can create labor shortages. If you keep people fully employed, it does actually help to, get, to minimize inflationary pressures because you have a much larger pool of stock of what we'd like to call shovel-ready labor to draw on. Uh, I would uh, add a, a sort, uh, a very short comment. First, the uh, true inflation rate in Europe is now extremely high. The rate computed by the European Central Bank means absolutely nothing. If by inflation we mean the drop in purchasing power of the population in both France and Germany the rate of inflation is between 7 and 8 percent. And why? Because first, firms are imposing in their prices always rising markup or rate of profits. Second, because of privatization, the cost of utilities is always increasing. Third, because of the cartelization of the European economy. They speak of competition, but they do not want competition at all. So the demand is collapsing. The prices are rising, even for food. And why? Because the official objective is an always rising of the share of profits, which determines an increase in the value of stocks and financial assets. And a last point, because governments are always increasing taxes on value added, and it obviously generates an automatic increase in prices. So the European Central Bank could be suppressed. It is a useless, absolute king, like Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI. So, fewer applauses, maybe, <laughs> so that we could uh, save some time. And uh, whenever I see Fabio Fazio's show, there are people who applaud every five seconds. So, fewer applauses. <laughs> uh, now, if we get out of the euro, that's a question. If we get out of the euro, will we be able to sustain input costs, in particular energy input costs, with the new lira, of course? Uh, for, uh, I would say yes, because Europe now imports its energy mainly from Russia, 70% for gas, and Saudi Arabia, and neither the Russian nor the Saudis want euros. 
And as I said, if Italy with a shrewd and indeed democratic socialist government recreate its independence like Garibaldi when he tried to unite Italy on a people base. The euro will very soon vanish. And the problem of Italy is not that the lira could be depreciated, but that the new lira could be reappreciated because of the enthusiasm about the new Italian miracle. The question here says, the IMF is asking us to uh, balance our uh, deficits. How is it that they are asking China to have a 2% deficit? The IMF would love China to buy more American goods, and its request to China is that it commit suicide by uh, raising the value of the currency so that it will have the same suicide that the IMF and the United States asked Japan to do in 1975 at the uh, uh, agreements that it made that led to the, 1985, uh, that led to the uh, breaking of the bubble. Uh, there is no chance that China is stupid enough to act like a third world country and commit suicide. The Americans are not going to assassinate China and put in a dictator like they did in Latin American countries. Um, I think it's much more simple than that. I, I, the, 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 uh, oh, 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 sorry. I, I was think. I think it's much more simple than that. The, the, IMF has put uh, restrictions on government spending on Western governments all around the world, or try to. And as we've noted, one of the few growth outlets left for countries, especially in the European Monetary Union, is via their external sector. And there are only two obvious candidates uh, for countries that can run current account deficits now, and those would be the large trade surplus countries, both China and Germany. So, in a sense, the IMF is endorsing the sectoral balances logic by saying to China, run a larger current account deficit so that these other countries will be able to export their way to growth. And in some way, the IMF is a totally corrupt institution. The new chief of the IMF, Madame Lagarde, was a former legal advisor for Goldman Sachs. And it says all about the IMF. With uh, little development and with the high dependence on foreign resources, a country that is developing very much and that depends very much in terms of uh, raw materials, is MMT sustainable for a country like this? Why not? Yeah. This country makes loads of products that people want. And if the it's a country that people love to visit. This is about my 35th trip to the country. 
you're getting all of my Canadian and American dollars all the time. <laughs> So I would think that in the first instance, the terms of trade would move dramatically in Italy's favor, which would allow it to obtain all the foreign exchange it requires to obtain raw materials. Yeah, compare yourself to most nations in the world. They manage to get oil. There are all kinds of poor African nations that manage to get oil. Why is it that Italy thinks it can't purchase oil. Next to Germany, you're the most highly industrialized nation of Europe. The question now says, according to you, what are the weak points of MMT? Somebody, please. All right, I, I'll try. I have one. Uh, I, the, 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 the weak point is that we often say that uh, government is there primarily to mobilize resources for broader public purpose. And if the government is profoundly corrupt or dysfunctional, then it becomes much more difficult to achieve this function. So I think it's very important for MMT to try to integrate some theories of political reform in order to shore up what I think is maybe the main deficiency in its operations. I, I would make on this point a comment. Corruption of government always existed, but I studied this question. The more you impose restriction of sovereignty and the more corruption is increasing because the final outcome of IMF uh, European policy is to transfer all state functions to private monopolies or cartels. And a friend of mine, a Mexican, we know, studied the outcome of privatization for South America. I studied the outcome of privatization for France. The result is a total collapse of the quality of services and increasing source of profits for the private cartels and, and a total corruption for the politicians. It's exactly what happened at the time of the collapse of the USSR with the Yeltsin government with his advisors from Harvard. I'll just raise the single biggest issue that I think gets posed to those of us that work in this area in the US, and it's the same one that Marshall pointed out. A well-known TV personality six months ago took an interest in our work. The first piece that he wrote was highly critical and his main objection was how can you tell people that the government
can spend without limit, that it credits bank accounts, and that it doesn't need to get taxes or borrow in order to spend. It will lead to crony capitalism. When the government officials find this out, they'll go crazy. They'll do favors for one another. They'll be handing money out left and right. Don't they do that now? The best part about MMT is making the people aware that the government is not financially constrained. Because then when they try to make changes and they ask in the states, we're always asked for shared sacrifice, right? We need to cut our budget, times are tough. We can't afford to continue our social security programs, take care of the elderly, fund our educational system. And the American people, because they buy into the notion that the federal government is just like a household, they sympathize. They say, okay, take it. Cut my benefits. Take away my health care. Fire my teachers. But MMT makes it clear to everyone, not just the would-be crony politicians, but the citizens, that there is no financial constraint, and it removes the excuse for not acting on behalf of the people. So in a way, it's our... It's perceived as a weakness, but I think it's our one of our great strengths. This question, perhaps Randa Ray would have been more suited to this question, but a name of an Italian economist, if you know, or Italian economists, a name, whom we could uh, ask to submit an alternative uh, plan. Uh, Randy maybe has more direct experience. Maybe you know somebody. Sure. Andrea Terzi, who he teaches in Lugano. Claudio is Sardoni. And Claudio Sardoni. Paolo and, Gen Paolo. and Gennaro. Gennaro. Gen Gennaro, Gennaro Zizza. 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 All excellent economists. Mm -hmm. There's probably more, but. Many of you are on the Do you know Cesaratto? Facebook page, and some of these people are also on that page. Okay, okay. Another question. MMT is based on the principle that states only can create richness, wealth. But can the stock exchange, and this is the question, can't the stock exchange do the same when the value of a certain stock goes up? Goes up? It's, it's not that the state creates the wealth, it's that the state provides the unlimited financial resources so that you can create wealth in the real economy. That's an important distinction. You see, uh, the role of the stock exchange, and on this point, uh, both my friends, Jimmy Galbraith and Warren Mosler, agreed with me. What is the stock exchange doing? It creates pure numbers in the computers. It is fake wealth, a pure illusion. And now in Europe, as I try to explain, you could have a total death of the real economy, but the value of the stock exchange could rise. So 
as I wrote, and sustained by Jimmy Galbraith and Warren Mosler. So, why such a passion or an interest for the stock exchange at all? In the late 19th century, the then chairman of the Crédit Lyonnais, Henri Germain, wrote a sound bank must never be involved into the stock exchange. It must only be involved in public debt. Public debt is gold providing income. Just a maybe point of clarification on the last question. I'm wondering whether the question is referring to the MMT claim that the private sector cannot create net financial assets. And so the question about uh, stock increasing in value is perfectly consistent with MMT. The stock is issued by a private corporation held by a private entity, doesn't net, it, the net, it nets to zero. So the private sector cannot create net financial assets. I, I don't know if that helps. Professor Kelton also showed in her presentation that when the government runs a surplus, it can make it uh, difficult to impossible for the private sector to reach full productivity. renegotiate debt in case of default if the debt has been moved to a foreign jurisdiction as in the case of Greece where a good share of the outstanding debt uh, is now under British jurisdiction is this a serious problem in case of default and return to the sovereign currency it makes it harder um, obviously, if you have assets that are easy to seize in other countries, Italy is in much better situation than Greece in this regard, and you should be very opposed to any efforts by the new Italian government to create new debts for Italy that are susceptible to this kind of foreign pressure. Even if the debt, however, is owed abroad, if the, if the if the key assets that have to be seized to give value are in Italy, they typically don't have an effective way of getting those assets over the active opposition of the home government. And that's the hypothetical that you've taken control of your government again. At least as long as uh, we are not in the situation of Greece, I do think that the whole Greek politicians che la regola sia che i politici greci debbano essere incriminati per alto tradimento nei confronti della Grecia, del popolo e dello Stato greco. A Greek socialist prime, Perché? A Greek socialist prime minister un primo ministro greco socialista ha accettato che l'intera economia greca 
ruled, supervised, sia adesso controllata, supervisionata da degli ispettori nominati dalla Commission. Commissione europea. So we are back to e the quindi siamo ritornati Ottoman Empire, agli ultimi tempi dell'impero ottomano, quando i francesi e i britannici control controllavano totalmente le finanze dell'impero ottomano oramai moribondo. Che progresso! No, we're back to World War II when there was a allora, Greek puppet government for the Germans. Mondiale, quando c'è stato un governo fantoccio da parte dei tedeschi. Exactly. Esattamente. And we must never forget e non va mai dimenticato che c'è anche una questione, a very few people dare una to address. una domanda che mo pochissime persone osano the fare. Largest Real estate owners I più grandi Greece proprietari di immobili in Grecia Church. sono la, è la Chiesa Ortodossa. La Chiesa Ortodossa non paga le imposte. And as far as I know, e da quanto mi consta, the church la Chiesa e i greci i socialisti greci the Greece Civil War, che hanno, the dato hanno, hanno dato supporto durante la guerra civile greca allo sterminio di un milione di persone da parte dei monarchici, the fascist, dei fascisti e delle truppe britanniche. E dell'esercito britannico. Question concerning complementary currencies. Are they useful? Can they work? Complementary currencies. I don't know whether in the United States uh, you know what they are. I mean, I don't know enough about it. I don't know. Buckaroo. Come on, that's not. They want a circulating. Well, all right. There are some experiences both in Italy and abroad where some communities have created their own currency thinking that uh, they could be of help in case of an economic depression. Can these local currencies be of any help? Yes. <laughs> Uh, and the, these currencies have existed in sì, many places at many times. We even have tempo, a tiny version luoghi, at the University of Missouri, Kansas City Economics Department. Di Economia as long del as it's Missouri. internal to Italy, it's not a problem. In Italia non è un problema. But if you have Ma both the new lira and the euro, lira then you give l'euro leverage again if you put in your debt avrete nuovamente in euro terms, una leva se avete you're giving il leverage to the debt markets again euro, and not, you don't want to do that una volta una leva eh, sul mercato del debito e credo che sia eh, ciò che è opportuno fare and there is worse i have a way ma c'è di peggio io sono a conoscenza but di una soluzione if uh, we implement ma them se we are back la attuassimo The ritorneremmo early feudal age. al primo medioevo quindi dicevo al medioevo It is accepting the disintegration si tratta of di Italy accettare lo smembramento dell'Italia per ritornare uh, all'Italia prima del risorgimento uh, I don't think It is a non credo che solution. sia una soluzione But sostenibile, ma that policy questa of politica of the state di disintegrazione dello Stato è apertamente sostenuta Commission, dalla Commissione europea, which is obsessed che by è ossessionata dal regionalismo. E, come vi ho detto, questo riporterebbe all'Alto Medioevo. Uh, 
let's set a rule wherefore we accept two answers to each question and no more if you don't mind because otherwise uh, we might end up being repetitive so this is an important question for us Italians were we to go back to the lira as a sovereign currency what about uh, the rush to take capitals out of Italy. Uh, what would happen in that case? Uh, I don't see any reason uh, from, for any kind of outflow of capital. Outflow of capital and to go where? Uh, that outflow of capital indeed existed. A very few people is aware of before the implementation of the European Monetary Union. I do think that the more Italy maintains the euro system, the more capitalists who are not stupid and they are more intelligent than the European bureaucrats, the more there will be a gigantic outflow of capital to where United States. So the sole way of preventing this outflow is to recreate Italy, Italian sovereignty, Italian state. Well, very quickly, um, Alain may be right, but it is possible you might need to introduce temporary capital controls. That's not such a bad thing. The Malaysians did it in the aftermath of the financial crisis of 1997-98, and the country has prospered very happily even after they introduced those controls. So it might be necessary for a temporary expedience, but not necessarily permanently. The important thing is to have capital controls to prevent money from coming into Italy yes. and seeking Bravo. to buy you out. Question. In 1982, Mexico defaulted, even though it had a sovereign currency. That's not true. Well, that's not true. Mexico uh, pegged its currency to the dollar. That's what caused the crisis. It pegged its dollar to the U.S. Uh, currency at a massively overvalued level, and that's what created the crisis. It wasn't free floating, so it wasn't sovereign. Mexico never defaulted in 1982. It threatened to default, and the Americans came in and uh, introduced the Brady Plan to write down all of Latin American debts by a large amount. But uh, if Mexico would have defaulted, Citibank and American banks would have gone bankrupt. So the Americans went to tr uh, Mexico and said, don't default we will bail you out, we'll pay you anything you want, don't default and destroy our banking system. Kelton? Slovenia is a country we should imitate, do you think? 
Uh, can you also well, I was interested the enough as as Slovenia serving as a potential model for some of the southern European countries that I contacted uh, an economist who lived for many years and taught in Bologna here, was a professor of economics at the Levy Institute. He was Randy Ray's professor, actually, for a time. Um, and he worked at the UN in their Trade and Development Commission. And so I asked him whether there were examples real-world examples of countries defaulting on their debt, launching a new currency, and having this play out in anything that could be characterized as an orderly fashion. And he emailed me back and he said, the only example I know of is Slovenia. Now, I do not know enough about Slovenia yet. Uh, I have a couple of papers that I'm planning to read when I get back. He sent me the contact information, as I said, for the person who drafted the plan. It was well planned. They spent a lot of time. And apparently, it worked rather smoothly. So yes, I think Slovenia could serve as a blueprint going forward. But the most successful example of a country that defaults is, of course, the United States. <laughs> What's, huh? It has no, no, how, how can it possibly repay its debt? But there's no way it can repay its debt. It's it's what? It's in its own debt. Yeah, yes, sure, yes, that's, that's the point debt. I was making. Oh, yeah. Why did you say that? Because, <laughs> because he began to stop in the middle. Oh. Okay. Nobody ever expects it to repay the debt because it can just roll it over. Oh, you mean to repay okay, the whole now, thing uh, outright? I, I, I the name of the guy. Uh, uh, and you have to repeat your uh, statement. That's okay. Because there, there was so, no, there was swapping uh, uh, translators. Uh, All right. I need that uh, little internet deal, that little thing that gives you Wi-Fi. Do you have, is, it, is it available? Uh, I can get the name. Do you want my phone? Uh, I mean... No, it's in my email. Oh, uh, what is it? That you have that little device that sends off a wireless signal so that I can get in my email. Oh, you have wireless here. I don't. We don't. Yeah. No, there's no wireless. No. Okay. Uh, but no. I, I mean, I can send it to you tomorrow. You want to just repeat it in English, or? Yeah. Well, how are they going to hear our answer? Uh, they can hear us, I think. Yeah. I could comment briefly because at that time 
I had been invited by the European Investment Bank to comment on this uh, program. There were two conflicting, two conflicting Eurobonds programs. The first I supported was that Eurobonds should be bought by the European Central Bank and resources provided to Greece uh, or whatever. But there was another solution which prevailed the, central, the European Central Bank should not the least be involved. France and Germany should issue bonds bought by banks. The resources will be then recycled to loans to Greece and with the money Greece will repay a share of its debt. The system was finally entirely rejected by the European Commission because first it generated a, a pan-European rise in debt and because it could prevent Greece to deflate enough its economy. So now the Eurobond system is completely out of discussion. Can you hear me? Testing one, two, three. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, so this is a question specifically concerning Italy. In Italy, there is a, a lot of uh, TV ads and TV uh, campaigns by some people, let's put it that way, saying that to bring things uh, back uh, on track in Italy, it is sufficient to recover uh, tax evasion, uh, fight against corruption and against uh, illegal work. Uh, do you think that's enough? No, and actually the key need at this point is not for tax increases, but for spending uh, increases. I don't miss, wish to diminish the importance of the corruption point, but I will make the same point I did yesterday, which is that there has been corruption in, in Italy, like every other country, for many decades. But the country was able to live very prosperously in the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, and the 1980s, even with the corruption. The difference now is that you are under the slavery of the euro. Not enough gain.
first, first, a political reason. All of them were closely related uh, to uh, François Mitterrand and the regime of François Mitterrand. Uh, next, all of them shared the same ideology. They hated the so-called Italian miracle. They shared the Vatican-sponsored ideology of a cure of austerity poverty for the Italian people. Uh, like Mitterrand, they wished to recreate a new kind of Italians. François Mitterrand said, I hate the French as they are. And your politicians had exactly the same view of Italians. Good. Is it correct, can you hear me? Yes. Is it correct to think that were it not for the last program for payment of huge amounts of liquidity is it working yeah I don't know. I don't know if it would have been January, um, but there, but there's no question that his actions at least stabilized conditions temporarily. He is uh, severely constrained in terms of what he can do politically. Um, he is held back to a large extent by the Bundesbankers. And I think he has responded to this particular crisis with some degree of creativity. But he has only temporarily addressed the solvency problem and he has certainly not addressed the more serious problem of deficient aggregate demand, and he must do so for this crisis to truly go away. This crisis gets described all the time as a Greek bailout, but overwhelmingly the European response has been a bailout of the largest banks, particularly the German banks. That's what's really going on. And uh, I must say also, the French banks, because uh, what is more and more shocking, when people speak in the media of stability, stability of what? To save the net wealth of banks 
while the real economy is now completely falling into hell. Nobody cares anymore in the debate about a fundamental question why currency or money exist at all. I am back to my analogy with the late day on the ancien regime. The euro could be said for some time, but before the European economy and maybe the European people could be dead. Well, forever is a very long time, but what both governments are promising is to take back one form of their IOU, the, the government bond, and issue a different form of government IOU, a bank account credit, which they do in the real world with a keystroke. They don't print up currency, notes and coins and mail them to the bondholders. They credit their bank accounts by pushing a button on a computer keyboard. They mark up the numbers in their balance sheet. What they're doing when they retire debt is taking the security back in and sending a different government IOU out. We call it sovereign money. And as long as the debts are denominated in sovereign money, they can't run out of keystrokes. So yes, it's sustainable in perpetuity. And I'll, make a, I'll make a quick qualification to that, which is that there is infinite capacity to pay the debts. The only question that arises is whether there's a willingness to pay. So if the United States Congress, for example, refuses to extend the debt ceiling, as almost occurred about a year ago, then the US may choose to voluntarily default. But that is a separate decision from the question of whether they have the capacity to pay. So you have to distinguish between the two things. This is important. The only case that any of us is aware of, of a sovereign government defaulting on sovereign debt with a fiat currency, is the case of Japan after World War II, and Japan defaulted because it didn't want to pay back the US, its enemy from wartime. It could have done so, but it chose not to. And that's Marshall's point. You always have the ability to pay, but you may become unwilling to pay. And just a short historical comment. Even at the time of the gold standard, until maybe 1914, Okay, okay. So, I, I finish. All countries were running enormous deficits. One question. Can you, can you hear the translation all right now? Yes? Uh, a question I think... Mm, Black is the one who can answer it. 
private citizens, and I think they're also referring to private investment funds. Can they use pension funds uh, for their objectives? How can we defend ourselves from that? Uh, you don't have to defend yourself from credit markets if you have a sovereign currency and your debts are denominated in your currency, and you don't have fixed rates. I'm not sure I understood the question adequately. The question was about private, and I think they think about uh, private investment funds. Can they use pension funds, uh, th th rather they can use pension funds for their own objectives? Uh, how can we defend ourselves from them doing so? Oh, uh, I think I, I see that you, you mean in the event of say speculative attacks on, on currencies and things like that. La valuta, o qualcosa del genere. That's more a problem of, uh, Credo che sia un problema che than, uh, si riferisce più agli hedge funds che ai fondi pensionistici di per sé. Uh, Però è sempre possibile uh, approvare delle leggi in modo da uh, eventualmente ovviare a questo problema. Le valute fluttuanti sono veramente dei pessimi bersagli per gli speculatori. If I may specify, I think the person who asked the question was thinking about what happened with the American mortgages, uh, packaging, repackaging, dicing and re-dicing. Well, that's, uh, that's more uh, uh, a problem Beh, of questo è più creating un problema the product. In termini di creazione del prodotto. And this is why we Ed say per that for, noi diciamo if we have financial reform, we should, uh, in caso di una riforma finanziaria dovremmo andare a limitare la gamma di attività che possono essere svol svolte contro l'interesse pubblico, come per esempio l'acquisto di mutui subprime. We're with Paul Volcker who said, you know, just one time, Paul Volcker che abbia detto che I'd like to see these anche solo una volta vorrei vedere quali sono i presunti vantaggi di questi derivati finanziari dimostrati da qualcuno. There is no such proof. E credo che non ci sia una prova di questo genere. Noi ci allineiamo a lui. Un minuto per cambiare le cuffie, scusate. Perché se no qua. No, non mi ha la cuffia a me. We have a problem. Slovenia, is it in the euro? Is it out? Is it in the eurozone? Is it out? So could you please make it clear? Okay, yes. So what Slovenia did was to leave a previous monetary arrangement, launch its own currency. This was done in 2001. They adopted a new currency called the Talar, and they issued the Talar for a period of time in the early, mid-2000s until the point that they became a member of EMU. As far as you know, is there any possibility to uh, implement MMT in third world countries? Do you, do you define Argentina as a third or a first world country? Hmm. Um, it, there's some, been some variation of uh, the job guarantee program being introduced in India as well, the uh, rural employment uh, Act, I believe it's called, where they try to provide job guarantees for people in the agricultural sector. But it is more of a problem, I think, uh, in areas where there is higher levels of political corruption, no question. You said more than once that Italy is not like Greece, and you underline this. 
But how much time do we have before the fiscal compact takes us to a no return point, as in Greece? Uh, it's a good question. I think uh, it could be, you know, a matter of a year or two if it's uh, if they strongly try to implement this uh, fiscal pact. That is certainly a risk. What I'm hoping is that there will be a sufficiently large uh, social and political reaction that uh, the authorities will finally change uh, course. That seems to me to be the best hope for not only Italy but all of Europe. There's a very interesting report. It was an UNCTAD report, the United Nations Commission on Trade and Development, that was published in December of last year. And its co-author is a German economist. And I was listening to an interview with him just last night in my room. The report that the commission issued in December warned of the grave possibility of a recession in Europe and beyond, a global economic recession that had the potential to turn into a depression. The interview I watched last night was conducted more recently. He's more worried now than he was then when he wrote the report because of austerity being imposed in so many countries. He understands very clearly the macroeconomic consequences. He laid them out in exactly the way that I did. He focused on the loss of jobs, the loss of income, the loss of sales, the loss of tax receipts, and the exploding deficits, rising interest rates, and crushing debt. In his view, things are so serious that he anticipates people in the streets, not just in Greece, but in Portugal, and even in France. The fact that many central banks European central banks, but also the American, the Fed, if I'm not wrong, have some private participation. Does this have any effect, a negative impact? Is this in conflict with MMT? What do you think about this? Well, they certainly have uh, conflicts of interest because of the private role in the Federal Reserve banks. The boards of directors are controlled by the banks and U.S. investigators, and these are governmental investigators, not, you know, harsh uh, lefty types, have found that these conflicts lead to real-world problems. So the, the mantra of central banks, of course, is independence, independence, independence from politics but complete dependence on the banking industry. So yes, you sh uh, it is a problem. Uh, the central banks, it's one of the reasons they are hostile to modern monetary theory. But you know that you have to win over the central bankers. You know they're your opponents everywhere in Europe and the United States. A few months ago, a U.S. Senator by the name of Bernie Sanders put together a committee to help him, to advise him about ways to reform the Federal Reserve, dealing exactly with this kind of issue. The committee consists of 14 or 15 economists from all over the United States, and I am proud to say that MMT is well represented on that committee. There are four MMT economists serving on the Sanders Commission to Reform the Fed, and we'll be doing our best in the coming months 
to push for exactly the kinds of changes that we know we need. Do you know the theory of bank seniorage, according to which central banks create money with at zero cost and they sell it at some cost for the states? And to avoid this, presidents Jefferson and Kennedy were allegedly killed in the attempt of preventing this bank seniorage from taking place. Do you, have you heard about this? Do we have a fractionary reserve as a phenomenon of seniorage by the banks, private banks, onto the states? Um, no, governments are very much in favor of seniorage. They make money off of it, in some sense, if, as you say. So uh, they didn't have to assassinate presidents because of opposition to it. I must add, you see, uh, that uh, the uh, theory of senior age is a very old idea which had been invented uh, by the so-called uh, prophet of the new European order Friedrich Augustus Hayek. It is pure, old-style, classical theory, and I must confess, I never understood the theory of senior age. I'm saying something very seriously, and this is no joke, because in Italy, seniorage is taken seriously, unfortunately, and seriously. I haven't said anything to this. I didn't prepare them about this, so they, these were spontaneous answers from them. So, but nevertheless, uh, seniorage is taken very seriously here in Italy. Now, question. If we were to go back to Lira, to the Italian currency, wouldn't banks be better if uh, they were nationalized? Shouldn't we have public banks only? Uh, well, you see, in principle, I would say yes. It depends on the mission given to nationalize central banks. The example not to be followed was what happened in France from 1982 to 1986 or 7. The Mitterrand regime nationalized most of banks. But why? Because private banks were bankrupt because of their outrageous speculation activities. But the banks being nationalized behave exactly as private banks. So it was finally a total failure. So indeed, again, it is a political question, the control of the people to the gov on the government. Next question. But I lost it. No, here it is. Well, seemingly there is a contradiction that has emerged uh, from uh, uh, your presentations. Because if it is true that the French-German axis is destroying the industrial bases in Italy and of the peaks country, if this is true, 
And if it is true that uh, the euro is a criminal project, uh, well, in that case, Fran France and Germany too have, in a way, forced themselves to lose um, sovereignty, monetary sovereignty. Isn't, isn't this a contradiction? Uh, yes. But these contradictions could be explained. Indeed, we are dealing with psychotic people. But on the other side, the German and the French governments do not truly surrender their sovereignty. They entirely control the system. Surrendering their monetary sovereignty was simply the way to impose what was their core idea, destroy democracy, and I repeat myself, impose a new order they had in mind. So again, we are back to a political, a philosophical order uh, question. So there is no contradiction, I think. Germany and France were only willing to support the creation of the euro because they knew they would utterly control the ECB, the European Central Bank. Uh, yeah, in that respect, it's not inconsistent with MMT. MMT says if you give up control of your currency, you can't do certain things. You're saying they are actually still in control. There are two questions here. I think one connected to the other. The issue of uh, the phantom of the big government. Uh, and, well, Lira coming back to Italy, possible nationalization of banks, uh, the Italian economy should be partly nationalized, uh, and the state is the government's becoming too... Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, somebody, so the government's getting too bulky, it's getting everywhere, it's far too large. Is that the risk of having a public mega government which is potentially less efficient than privates? There is really no, uh, all of this talk about large government is an attempt by the banks to check and to destroy the only organ of government strong enough to control it. If planning is shifted out of the hands of government, it passes on to the hands of the banks. The banks want the planning, so they depict government as a monster, so that they can be the even bigger monster replacing the little monster. One thing that you can do in common is make sure whether the banks are public or private, they cannot be so large that they pose any systemic economic danger. And if they're smaller, they will also have less political power, even if they're, and I mean political power even if they're state-owned, the kind of power we see in France that is so destructive. So keep the banks small, whether they're public or private. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? The danger is, uh, should a possible default happen, everybody panicking and uh, piling up foreign currencies, uh, uh, attempting to uh, create deposits in Swiss francs and the like. Do you think this might uh, cause a major problem for Italy? Uh, I don't think so. Because now, 
uh, I could testify that the owner of the largest fortunes in France are already anticipating a collapse of the euro and there is an enormous outflow of capital to the United States. Banks have already calculated, computed the end of the euro. They know the system cannot survive. A question for about MMT. If the government becomes the gar uh, guarantor of full employment, uh, so becoming last resort employer, what happens if uh, the government cannot fire anyone anymore, cannot lay off anyone because financial rules are very strict about that? Nobody will want to work in the private sector. Nobody will want to work in the private sector where uh, layoffs are still possible, or at least it would be easier to lay off people. But for, while being not an official MMT, I could answer the problem of Europe is that now, without MMT, circuitist, uh, post keynesian the private European sector does not want anymore to hire people. It has been decided it will be maintained. The European corporations are no more interested in employment and the real economy. And the tragedy, worse, of a Greek tragedy is that government are exactly following the same situation. So soon, the entire population will survive on charity incomes or die. The job, the job guarantee does not give you a job that you can't get fired from. If you do not show up for work, if you are a nurse and you hurt people, you get fired. So you can lose your job. Well, a question uh, that uh, might have been answered already, but uh, it's about uh, growth. Uh, cannot be never-ending and infinite in a destroyed world, is in a finite world. What's the link with MMIT and how should this thing be managed? Well, the, the uh, answer is that uh, growth, uh, the, there are limits to growth, real resource constraints. We accept that. The primary contention of MMT is that there is not a financial constraint. We may not be able to do something because there is a shortage of a particular good or a particular resource. But that is a very different question from saying we can't do something because it's fiscally unsustainable or we can't afford it because we're going to go bust like a household. That's a completely different uh, argument. And unfortunately, the question of financial constraint is what is usually used to justify inactivity on fiscal policy. But we do recognize the existence of real resource constraints, no question. And a short comment, because I know for a very long time, the prophet of anti-growth movement, the French economist 
la touche. The problem is that Mr. Latouche, a former Maoist, he now is now an advisor of Marine Le Pen. A comment, if you may, on the Hungarian situation, situation in Hungary that has uh, a sovereign money, strong political majority, and uh, major problems. Uh, a country in trouble, they uh, find it hard to fight back uh, the blackmails of the International Monetary Funds and the European Union. My understanding, first of all, is that the foreign is pegged to the euro. So it's not completely sovereign. It has another problem, Hungary, which is that the country, when it was making preparations to join the European Union and ultimately become a member of the Eurozone, was told, like many other Eastern European countries, that you could just borrow in the Euros or you could borrow in Swiss francs because soon you'll be in the European Monetary Union. And in any case, you have a very, very low rate of interest. And I've seen this in many um, emerging economies. They look at the interest rate and they fail to appreciate things called foreign exchange risk. And in the case of Hungary, you have a very high number of Swiss franc and euro denominated mortgages. So this creates an additional constraint for them. And this is what gives uh, the European um, Union uh, leverage over them to some extent, along with the structural uh, funds that they are promising them and now using to blackmail them. But Hungary uh, should have probably never engaged in any kind of uh, foreign debt, private foreign debt accumulation, and the foreign should be allowed to float it. It's a, it's a similar problem to what Latvia had. And Hungary's ethnic policies have removed any political allies it might have. Any suggestions about how to oppose the phenomenon of uh, uh, relocation of uh, companies, uh, people moving to countries where uh, labor is cheaper, so outsourcing of labor? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, well, this is, I think, the key problem with everybody trying to emulate Germany's export growth strategy because what that does is lead to a race to the bottom where everybody keeps trying to cut their wages in order to remain as competitive as possible and it's a zero-sum game because as one country lowers its wages more and more manufacturing companies threaten to relocate to these uh, countries in order to uh, um, get much lower rates and then you get this re ongoing race to the bottom. So you need to uh, promote uh, policies which not only create job growth but rising income. The labor cost variable is the shortest and easiest way for many businesses to fatten their profit margins but it's ultimately very self-defeating because it does ultimately destroy demand. I should say that Germany ha has stopped trying to relocate its labor abroad because it finds where it has, for the German type of production, it has not had very good uh, success because the quality of labor abroad is nowhere near as good as German labor. So there's been a repatriation of industry towards uh, Germany. If you're a country that maintains a strong educational and training system, uh, the principle that the Americans discovered in the 19th century will operate. High wage labor undersells low wage labor because it tends to be more efficient uh, and productive labor. Well, it's not going to be very long yet because I can imagine many of you have to go back home, take plays, drive back. So we'd rather keep it short. Unfortunately, we have so many questions. 
there's one here. In, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, even going back to a sovereign money, there are still uh, so many organizations and institutions that are international that uh, affect our economy and our policy making, such as uh, the World Trade Organization, Bilderberg, uh, Trilateral Commission, the International Monetary Fund. So uh, how can we develop MMT in such a context? Uh. Again, while being not MMT, but uh, fellow traveler, my reply would be simple, ignore those international organizations. If you have the Lira, you have no need for aid from the World Bank or the IMF. two questions, uh, I'll, uh, I'll ask them both at the same time. And it's about uh, the creation, uh, full employment, uh, job creation. Don't you think this may lead to the paradox of where jobs are created that are completely useless in order to give a job to somebody? And uh, uh, there may be the danger of uh, seeing uh, people just moving away from private jobs. It's a it's a question we get asked often. The purpose of the public sector employment program is to find useful things for people to do. Things that need to be done anyway and aren't getting done. This is not a program that's designed to pay someone a wage to dig a hole and fill it back up. I mentioned the New Deal and I gave just a handful of examples of what was accomplished in the 1930s under those programs. I can assure you that in the US and in Italy and in just about any country we put our finger on, there are more than enough useful things for people to do. There's no limit. We can find things that add value to society. This is not a make-work program. And to support Stephanie, I think that those who criticize those kind of programs ignore the metamorphose of capitalism in Europe. Capitalism in Europe, or the private sector, is no more capitalism according to Marx's expectations. It is a pure parasite system, which, I repeat, does not want anymore to hire people. They, when you discuss with them, they say people should understand that we do not need them. In the early 90s in Italy, the technical governments abolished the law dating back to 1936, according to which there was a ban on mergers uh, between commercial and investment banks. The question is, is it advisable to introduce this kind of separation in Italy? Yes. <laughs> well, at this point, I think uh, I'll take two questions with short answers. Uh, quite interestingly, especially for you, who have uh, studied the history of money, is it true that uh, fiat money that has been described uh, throughout uh, the summit uh, 
has uh, as it was been there for ta- from since time immemorial. It's been ex- in existence for centuries. Uh, it's not a modern invention. Short answers, please. Uh, yes, it certainly has since Sumerian times in 30, uh, the third millennium BC. If you read Plutarch's Lives, he will describe how Sparta's money was made out of iron that was dipped in vinegar so that it could not be used. The word for coin, numismatics, comes from the Greek word nomos, which means created by law. Uh, So the history of the first uh, 4,000 years of money, from Sumer to Babylonia to Sparta to Greece to Rome, was that money is always given its value by government to the extent that government will accept it in payment for uh, public services or taxes. So all money is fiat money. Another question, very quickly. Have you already set the date for the next summit? Uh, (laughs) Or uh, the next summit with us in Italy? I am uh, uh, crazy about rules. I love rules. I think we should pay tribute to these people. They are really knackered. They've been working like crazy. They've traveled all the way from the States, uh, jet lag. They've been working morning, evening, afternoon, night, all the time. We should thank them a lot, but they need a bit of applause. And then I'd like to ask them to sit back again because I have a final address and they, are, of course, are important. Marshall Orbach, William, Wolfsburg, Kilatov, Black, Michael Hudson, Alain Parguet. go back to a bit more okay. depressing mm. topics. This is really very serious That's and important. Uh, I'd like to conclude on this. Uh, I'm not going to c- thank anyone, even though uh, there's been a group of young people that I met uh, on Facebook. They've been really unbelievable. I'm losing my voice, I'm sorry, says Paolo. They've been unbelievable. They've been working like crazy. I don't want to make any acknowledgements but and why you want, may ask but let's be serious. Uh, when in South Africa the black uh, of the African National Congress and uh, Nelson Mandela were fighting for their freedom same as the um, American black they struggled uh, for their freedom they wouldn't meet on the street and say thank you you're wonderful let me hug you thanks a lot congratulations they wouldn't say this to each other same applies to us to the Italian partisans that fought against fascism the European partisans the Chilean um, young people that were tortured to death uh, in their 20s people that uh, struggle for something never congratulated one another we are struggling, we are on a struggle, and we're not here to congratulate one another. We simply have to keep struggling and move ahead. 
go on, a sovereign money state legitimized by citizens spending this money with a good deficit spending for the well-being of 99% of all citizens is the only true type of democracy and Mariaka Terraciano is my 